It's been a while since I first met you. Hold my head up high. Yeah, I know you guys like my singing. You don't have to tell me. Oh, go ahead and tell me. Type it in. Jerry, Jerry Gray's. Why, why aren't you an American Idol? <laughs> anyway, um, I'm going to go ahead and hop into it. We talk about uh, ostracism here. We talk about patronizing people here. Um, narcissism. You know, pretty much all the, the, the bad stuff. We try to turn it into good stuff. You know, um, without further ado, we're going to jump into the topic. This is the topic is about confusion. Um, what I've noticed is that people try to keep a target in a state of confusion. Why? Why? It's because they want to make you feel disempowered. Confusion not only makes you make the wrong decisions, it not only makes you um, basically like not know who you are. Like you can lose track of who you are if you're confused for a long enough period of time, you know. And, and and it makes it easier for you to be molded, but it also makes you feel disempowered. It makes you feel weak. Nobody goes into bold action when they're confused. When you're confused, you want to you get hesitant. You second guess and you're you're a better target then. And what I've noticed is that there's people out here who try to keep you in that state of confusion and even people who are quote unquote good people you know you have toxic people you have narcissists and you have people everybody's toxic in this world by the way that's something that we need to understand is because we don't live we live under a system of white supremacy you know which is something I, I say a lot just because it's true and that's an evil system, so it spoils all the people on the planet, you know, so everybody, even myself, nobody's the way that they should be, everybody's toxic, for one, so there's no good people, um, but there's people that who are a little bit less toxic than other people, now, even the less toxic people, they when you live under a system of white supremacy, right, you're allowed to mistreat certain people of people of color, black people, you know, and all non-white people. So it's not a bad thing to, to join in on mistreatment in many, many people's eyes, you know, and that carries over into just, it, it doesn't just, there's boundaries, it's supposed to be only certain people of color who get mistreated, but it, it bleeds into even white people who will face that because you can't just have an evil that stays on one side or it just doesn't work. But uh, so what ends up happening is you have these people who are supposed to be, you know, non-toxic. They're supposed to be normal, but they participate in, in evil things all the time. Now, let's just talk about um, just regular abuse or mistreatment. You have a person who is is the target in the workplace or in a family. Now, what ends up happening is it starts with the abusive person, a narcissist or somebody like that. They'll get, get the whole thing started. They'll work really hard to get that person ostracized, to get to send off the the nonverbal cues. And nonverbal cues are more powerful than even word of mouth. Like people think rumors are bad. Rumors are bad, but they travel slower. They travel fast, but they travel slower than just a certain somebody giving a certain look somebody turning their back to to someone or you know doing certain things or a laugh somebody laughing at someone at a uh, at a time where they shouldn't be laughing at them the person's serious they're not telling a joke that message gets sent 
you know, non-verbally. They're not, they're not saying anything, but with their body language, with their expression, they've passed a message. And it's perfectly okay in our culture to pass off negative messages about a person. And so it's not okay to say things about people, like say that negative thing. But since it's okay to pass it off with your body language, it goes a lot quicker. It doesn't take, and it really only takes a few seconds to really, if you want to ostracize or uh, put somebody on the, you know, on the outskirts, you can actually do that in, in a few seconds if you really wanted to, depending on how the person looks, you know, if they already look like a, a loner, you can have that person ostracized in a few seconds as soon as they walk in the room just with a look, just by you giving a look at them and then looking at somebody else a certain way then boom it doesn't take that long so my point is is that they're, they're able to do that right so there's this communication that goes on that's not being said and what ends up happening is everybody starts trying to confuse this one target even the, the people who aren't supposed to be they aren't narcissists, they aren't full-blown psychopaths or anything like that, but they participate. You know, a lot of people do, like 80% of the people are going to participate in this in one way or another, you know. So, to keep the victim confused, they use double standards, they use condescension, they use... um hostility because imagine it like if you if you don't know why you, you've caused anger or why somebody doesn't like you it, it makes you have to think about it and if there's no if it's irrational again that's just going to cause the person to be confused and again if he's confused he's disempowered so what ends up happening is just that, all right, we can start with with uh, the double standard. You know, people, we, we've all seen this. One person says a joke, nobody laughs. Then the next person says the same exact thing. Then everybody in the room erupts in laughter. You know, did, it, did somebody go around and say, oh, when Keith says a joke, we aren't going to laugh. But when anybody else says it, we are. Did they say that? No. It was just a series of body language, series of looks, uh, uh, people purposefully not laughing when Keith says a joke before, you know, and looking at other people while they're laughing like you shouldn't laugh. You know, it's just stuff, little stuff like that. And eventually everybody's on board, you know. Um, and so that's one of the ways that they participate people who aren't narcissists per se participate in keeping the person confused because a double standard is a very confusing thing because that person's going to think why is that happening why what is it about me and how can I change that so then they're going to be in their head confused and trying to figure out even though it's irrational so there's no conclusion to come to. So then they just go in circles and circles in their head. They're confused. Now you have normal people, air quote parentheses, you know, normal people participating in keeping this person conf confused. That's one way to do it. And that's how you guys all have seen this. And that's proof of this happening now it, it actually doesn't stop there though even the 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 narcissist they're going to be doing every trick in the book against this person but the average person they just have that one thing that they do that's toxic that they don't think is that bad but it also causes confusion so they'll be the person who is very patronizing to the to the target 
you know, so now he has to wonder, is that guy patronizing me? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And then he turns and he talks to this other person, and then the next person is hostile. He just blows up <laughs> for every, any little thing. And then uh, the next person, it could be anything. Like, they just, they're just uncomfortable, you know. They don't think that there's anything wrong with that. You know, if I'm not comfortable with somebody, then, hey, you know, that's what it is. But there might not be a real reason for you not to be un- to be comfortable with that person, right? Do you, I mean, do you know this person? Have you given that person a chance? Most of the time, no. You're, you're just following along. So that's like your, your, again, that's your thing that you don't think is very, it's bad, you know, but it's it's actually a part of what's going on. It's a part of making that person confused. It's part of abusing them because they're going to be wondering why you're so uncomfortable. And then they're going to be trying to make you comfortable. And then you're just like, you know what? I'm never going to be comfortable around you. That's something that you don't say, but that's really what you're doing, right? Now, do you see what I'm saying? Now, you see how people have their own little brand of being toxic or mistreating someone that can cause the person to stay in a state of confusion. And, uh, again, all of these people have their own little things that they do. And they'll deliberately do this only to the target, you know only to the target and uh, that person the target ends up becoming you start losing who you are like anything can happen at that point because now you're just super confused you you end up doing anything you don't know what you're going to do and then the next thing you know you might get yourself in trouble you just lose the sense of who you are you know at that point because you're just walking around confused. You feel disempowered. And, uh, you know, the, the, the people that are like full blown narcissists are really going to start hunkering down once that really starts to take effect on that person. They're going to start ramp- ramping up everything, you know. Um, but this is, this is just about the confusion thing. So, if you find yourself in that situation, um, <clears throat> it's just like one of those things where to bl- bring clarity to the situation, you got to first start to expect everybody of of what they are. Everybody's toxic to a degree, you know. Um, and if somebody does something to you early on, like if you meet somebody in the blow up on you for no reason you understand that that's their form of acceptable abuse you know to them it's like well you deserved it because you made them mad they're not thinking it's a a rational anger they're thinking you know you you deserved it i'm just expressing myself you know so it's okay i'm not a bad person but they're just doing their part but if they do that, then you know that that's their preferred method of abuse. That's their preferred method. Then the next person, if they're a patronizer, if you catch them early on patronizing you and you're confused as to uh, whether they're doing it, as to who you are, like if you feel belittled, like you start feeling smaller, you start to feel inferior, or like you're not as intelligent when you're talking to this person then you know okay they're a patronizer and you might even give them a a name you know i i sometimes like give them like codes you know because there's only so many different moves that they have you know if they're a patronizer then i you know there's more than one in the room so i'll say they're that's this is p1 P2 is the next person. P3, they're they're labeled by their preferred method of abuse. So that in my mind, that when they come up to me, it's not 
Thomas is coming up to me. It's P1, the patronizer, you know. He's about to come and he's going to patronize me. You know, I already know this. I'm not shocked and caught off guard. Because if that person shocks you, then you turn to the next. You turn to H1, which is hostile one. And then he blows up on you, you know. And then you're just like in this state of shock and confusion, you know. But it's almost like a chessboard. Like you have P1, P2, P3, P4, H1, H2, H3, C1, C2, C3. You know, those are condescending one, condescending two. Um, Ostracizer 01, 02, 03. And then you have the narc and the the psychopaths, the full blowns. They're like the queens and the kings, you know. They're the more powerful pieces. Um everything is really going to be set up that way because you want to just think of it like a, a chess board in the in in your work center or in your your family because one of the main ways to protect yourself on a real chess board is using space get your king as far away from the threat as possible you know so that's what you're doing you know you're you're you want to put space between you and all those people that you can, like, as far as you can, as you know, as you can, you know, but, uh, it's just a way to, to, to not be confused and actually, actually start to bring more and more clarity. The more clear that you are, the more clarity that you have, the more powerful you'll feel, like you'll feel stronger. The more confused you are, the, the weaker you're going to feel. And all these things that they do is going to confuse you. Somebody patronizing is being patronizing to you. is a, is a confusing thing. You know? So, just know what it is. And uh, if you start making mistakes... If you've done a lot of shameful things, like things you think about in your past, you're like, dang, why did I say that? Odds are it's because you were just in a state of confusion. You know, you had a whole bunch of people around you trying to keep you confused. And if you're confused, you can say or do any old thing. That doesn't mean that was you, you know. That's not you. That's the confused version of you. <laughs> but uh, try to get clarity. And that's all I got. Peace.